Joining me now, Ontario Conservative MP Aaron O'Toole. Thanks for joining us. Now, you say the government's apology and offer for compensation sends the wrong message. Why is that? Well, we're struggling around the world to combat terrorist ideology, the radicalization of, in some cases, young people. And so the Cotter case, it's a long and, and, and sad case on all sides, but <clears throat> he was directly involved in his family with the Al-Qaeda terror organization. You know, he's responsible for the death of an American serviceman, uh, Sergeant Spear, and to compensate him for what culminated in his detention from his terrorist activities, I think sends the wrong signal. The whole case is a bit of a, a saga, but uh, at the end of the day, the Cotter family were directly involved in terrorist activities and the deaths of people, including Omar Carter, and I don't think it sends the right signal for the government to be apologizing and compensating him. But this doesn't have to do with that part of it. What it has to do with our Supreme Court decisions that said the Canada and the government didn't act properly to protect his charter rights. Well, they certainly, uh, Mr. Cotter has brought up um, time, his time in Guantanamo. But how did he get there? He was first of all, saved on the battlefield by American medics. He had just killed one of their colleagues, but they, they saved him, and then he was detained. Certainly Guantanamo was controversial. President Obama said he was going to close it. President Obama is now retired, and it's still there. That, his issues with his time in Guantanamo are separate from what the Canadian government is responsible for. Uh, I don't think they should be compensating him for what culminated after his terrorist activities. That's what's controversial about this. These were Supreme Court rulings that they deprived him, the Canadian government deprived him of fundamental principles of justice. So do you think the Canadian government should go against those Supreme Court rulings? Well, I think this is not related to the Supreme Court decision in Mr. Cotter's case. This is related to a lawsuit Mr. Cotter has brought, and the government, the Trudeau government has That decided. they violated his charter rights. <clears throat> That's his Those claim. Those fundamentals. That's his claim. Um, certainly he was detained uh, as an enemy combatant during a conflict overseas. Where the charter application falls uh, is, is something the Supreme Court looked at, but the federal government is choosing to settle a lawsuit brought by Mr. Cotter by a large settlement and an apology. What I find interesting, Hannah, is this is being floated just a day or so after Canada Day. The Prime Minister is out of the country. They're hoping they can float this in the middle of the summer when no one's paying attention because it's very controversial. Mr. Cotter was involved directly in the death of an American serviceman. There's pictures of him making IEDs. This isn't a case like uh, the Arar case or other cases where somebody was innocent and detained uh, overseas. This is a case where somebody was directly involved in terrorism. But this doesn't have to do with Mr. Cotter's actions. This has to do with the conduct of Canadian officials during his time in detention. And, for example, Canadian officials violated his charter rights. So in that case, if his rights have been violated then shouldn't he get compensation? Well, I think if there's any compensation, it actually should go to the family of Sergeant Spear. There's a case where a U.S. Army medic was killed by Mr. Cotter uh, in the firefight that his colleagues then saved uh, Omar Cotter's life. The complaints he might have about detention in Guantanamo, I think, is directed against the Americans. Uh, the Canadian government um, has but the no Supreme role Court in has, establishing the The Supreme Court has government. ruled that the Canadian government didn't protect his charter rights. Um, the, the Supreme Court has said that uh, they had some concerns about Guantanamo, yes. The Canadian government did not operate the Guantanamo prison. You know, Mr. Mr. Cotter was detained there because he was an enemy combatant, uh, taken from the battlefield essentially there. I don't think it's appropriate for the Canadian government to then compensate him for a detention that was based on his activities with the Al-Qaeda terror network. What about the fact that he was 15? My colleague Catherine Cullen had a chance to interview uh, retired Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire a little bit earlier today. He maintains that Omar Cotter was a child soldier. Take a listen to what he had to say. The individual we're talking about is a child uh, that was recruited and indoctrinated and trained by adults uh, to fight an adult war. Fifteen. <clears throat> what do you think of that? Well, Romeo's a good friend of mine, and mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't rarely disagree with him, but I do here. The people that trained him were his parent and guardian. This is not a case of a child soldier that was conscripted into an army and fought. Could you see he a, was there with a, a family. 15-year-old, if your dad says do this, go against what your dad is saying? 
Well, his dad and brother continued to fight after Mr. Cotter was taken to Guantanamo after the firefight that he was involved in. Look, it's a terrible situation on all fronts, but for some, as I've seen to today, suggest that this is similar to the Arar settlement, where Mr. Arar was innocent of any activities and was taken to a country and abused uh, in, a, in a detention center somewhere else. This is a result of Mr. Cotter's involvement in terrorist activities directly. Some of it he's admitted to. So this is a tragic situation because he was there with his family, with his father and brother. So his legal guardian and their family were involved in terrorism. Thankfully, there's not a lot of cases like this, Hannah, but I think it sends a terrible signal when the, the, the government of Canada is going to give him $10 million plus as some sort of compensation for an episode that began with his involvement and his taking of a life, at least one life, he'd seen making IEDs as part of his work with Al-Qaeda. So how, how many other lives were taken by his direct actions? We can't say. I don't think anyone should be compensated for their involvement in what started as a, a terror campaign. Aaron O'Toole, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you.